Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. The countdown continues. We are now just a week away from Destiny 2's console launch and the news just keeps rolling in. I'm once again back with another handy roundup covering some of the most important and interesting information that surfaced since my last video. This time we're going to be talking predominantly about stuff that came directly from Bungie, not leaks, but actual information. Plus there's a few extra snippets from some of the open world exploration footage. That's the nice thing about having hours of EDZ footage to sift through. There's always something new to talk about. So if you do enjoy this, then a like will be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Also, before we get stuck in, quick reminder that there are still two giveaways running on the channel right now. They're both linked down below. One of them is for the awesome 3D printed Cade 6 and Saladin models from the Vault HQ. Meanwhile, the other one is for a PS4 Pro. Check the links down below if you guys haven't already entered. Now, kicking things off, first up, let's talk about this bad boy. This weapon here that was formerly known as either Dubious Volley or the Microphone Rocket Launcher. Actually, at one point, I even saw the name Karaoke Launcher floating around, which is kind of random. But either way, yesterday, it actually got a name. Wired uploaded a 20 minute long video with Luke Smith where he answered a load of questions from Twitter. It's actually a pretty funny video, it's part of their tech support series so I've linked that down below if you guys want to see the whole thing. But during that segment he had a huge model of this weapon next to him and he actually called it out by name. This weapon is called Wardiff Coil. I'm assuming on screen that is how you spell it, could be double F, not entirely sure. But either way, no, it is not called Dubious Folly, and it's definitely not called the Microphone Rocket Launcher. As a reminder, assuming the information on this weapon is still the same based on the perk list seen in Destiny 1, which it seems to be based on the gameplay that we've seen, then this will have a couple of interesting perks. One of them is Dubious Munitions, where kills from the volley add another round to the volley, and Dubious Ordnance, where the weapon delivers a high energy volley of explosive ordnance, hence why it got the name Dubious Volley. Now as mentioned from the gameplay that we've seen of this so far, it appears to behave pretty much how the perks detail. It deals arc damage, fires out a flurry or volley of arc explosives, and it seems to dish out some pretty devastating damage. It is a weapon that Destiny 1 players have for a long time been chasing or wanted to find out more about, so it'll actually be nice to finally be able to get this ourselves in Destiny 2 next week. But what do you guys think of the name? What if Kyle, do you like it, or do you prefer Dubious Volley? Anyway, next topic, hologram emotes. This was seen in some gameplay from Inside PlayStation. Once again, the video is linked down below along with any other relevant videos or topics that I discuss throughout this video. But during this gameplay, the Guardian uses one of these new emotes. You will see that upon doing so, this hologram of a table appears with a few random items on it and the Guardian then proceeds to flip the table. The on-screen text says Diamond Matrix, the name of the Guardian, flips out. So this genuinely is Destiny 2's table flipping emote, which is really cool. I also really hope that we get to see more of these. I mean, emotes have always been pretty cool, and there have definitely been some pretty memorable ones in Destiny 1. But throwing holograms like these into the mix just gives them a whole new dynamic. Think of how much more elaborate emotes could get if these holograms can be factored in as props. Imagine something like a basketball emote where you actually throw a ball through a hoop. Or maybe you wield a huge weapon in a victory pose. Or even hold something into the air like some kind of item from Zelda. The possibilities are endless. Maybe even a coin flip where you actually flip a coin. Well, what's nice about this is that you can begin to see we now really are getting a good degree of customization options for our guardians. Not only can we now apply shaders to weapons and pieces of armor individually. But we also have these new auras which we can earn from challenging activities that I spoke about during yesterday's video. The transmat effects link to the ships to alter your respawn animations and now even more fancy emotes. However, if the PC beta is anything to go by, it does still appear that we only have one emote slot, which is kind of a shame. For those of you guys that are new to Destiny, by default you have four emotes. Some sort of wave, dance, point and sit. And the custom slot allows you to replace the point emote with whatever you choose. I would have personally liked the ability to be able to pick four custom emotes, but alas, I guess that is not meant to be. Anyway, that is hologram emotes. What's next? Let's talk about weapon mods, or more specifically, elemental mods. This is also something that came up in the Luke Smith Wired video last night, but he spoke briefly about elemental mods for energy-based weapons. If you inspect an energy-based weapon in-game, you'll see it has a mod slot, and it has an elemental mod applied. Obviously, without even hearing this from Luke, it was pretty safe to assume that this would then allow us to alter the element on an energy-based weapon. But of course, without being able to see and test these out in-game, that wasn't really confirmed. Well, now it is. You will be able to get different elemental mods, solar, void, and arc, 
and swap them in and out accordingly on your energy weapons. Luke did however say that this won't apply to all weapons, for example exotics will be fixed since they're designed with a specific playstyle or use in mind. But generally speaking, energy weapons that drop, you will of course be able to. You can't then go and make a kinetic weapon into an energy, so you definitely couldn't take something like the Scathelock auto rifle, throw an elemental mod in it and turn it into an energy weapon, but of course within your energy arsenal you do have flexibility. One such example he gave was say that if you know one week, the Nightfall has a load of Cabal with orange or solar shields, and you have your favourite pulse rifle, that is by default arc. You might then decide to swap to a solar element so you can then deal with the shields more easily, more efficiently and also take advantage of that shield nuking ability. With that being said, I'm going to assume that mods will then be things that we can equip and unequip freely on the fly as opposed to say being single use items. If that is indeed the case, then it'll be incredibly important to farm and stockpile the most useful mods so that anytime you get a new weapon, you can then outfit it with the most valuable mods. Of course, on the flip side, if they are consumable, think of things like Chroma, then farming them is going to be even more important. And of course, that choice to go from like Arc to Solar might take a little bit more thought. But either way, I'm still personally super excited for this. It gives you a lot of freedom. Typically in the past, there have been situations where you have your favorite weapon, you wish you could take it to the Nightfall, but you're like, all right, it's Arc Burn this week. My Solar weapon, I'm going to have to leave it behind, but it might have been the weapon that you wanted to use. So being able to adapt your arsenal to the situation is going to be incredibly powerful. I'm personally really excited to see what they bring to the table too. I've played a lot of The Division in the past and that's a game that often has parallels drawn with Destiny and while the two are definitely in their own right different games they do too share similarities. Division has a pretty in-depth weapon mod system and that really does give you some great options for altering the way your weapon behaves in a given situation. And while I don't expect Destiny 2's system to be as in-depth as that, if it does end up being remotely similar then we could have some really fun combinations to mess around with. But anyway, Moving on from there, next up, the third thing I want to talk about from the Wired video is a mention of a PC PTR. Now, for those of you on console, perhaps unfamiliar with the term, a PTR is a patch test realm, sometimes referred to as a public test realm, and in the case of the division, a PTS or public test server. Whatever you call it, they are all fundamentally the same thing. Blizzard do this a lot, but other companies and other games do the same thing too. Essentially, a PTR or PTS is a place where content is dropped before it goes live, so that the player base can test it, report back on any bugs they find, so that when the update eventually rolls out to the public, it is the best possible experience. This is a really clever system, since exposing it to the wider player base, a quantity of people that exceeds that of any internal test team, is a surefire way to root out any issues via brute force. Sure, maybe the general player base don't have the same insight into testing as actual game testers, but players do play in unconventional means, and it's often through those means that issues are found. The only problem with these servers though, is that you get access to the content early, and as cool as that sounds, I mean, it is pretty cool. Progress within these servers is separate to your genuine in-game progress, and it then means that any surprises are usually lost when the game comes out. And it's that point that Luke echoed in the video. He's a big WoW player, so he's no stranger to PTRs, but he said, they likes the idea of being able to keep content secret and trusting in the team just to do better and ensure that the product that they put out is sound. I mean, imagine if the raid was accessible in a PTR. The notion of world first would sort of be lost. Not to mention PTRs on consoles are notoriously difficult to do, given the submission pipeline on those platforms. Developers can be more agile on PC and somewhat deploy updates as they see fit. Meanwhile, on consoles, they have to go through submission. But either way, Whatever the reason, as nice as it might be to be able to dive in early and explore the new content, it is ultimately something that the team at Bungie have discussed, thought about, but aren't planning to do at the moment. Whether that changes down the line will of course remain to be seen, but for the time being, it seems unlikely. Lastly, for the topics covered from the Luke Smith Twitter Q&A, is actually a discussion about the Gunslinger's second subclass tree. So far in the beta, we've only had access to one path, but he actually mentioned in the Q&A that this second path is, as far as he's seen, the highest orb generating path in Destiny 2. And in addition to that, this path also allows the Golden Gun to crit, meaning it might actually end up being a little more useful in boss encounters. Furthermore, when speaking about armor stats, he mentioned that Guardians will have a greater range of stats to play with this time round. So if you're a hunter, and in the past you've typically been that sort of low defense, high agility character, and while you do have some options to play around with, you are ultimately a little bit more limited. Meanwhile, in Destiny 2, they want you to be able to fine tune that a little bit more. So if you want to be a more defensive hunter or a more agile titan then you'll be able to do that. Additionally one last thing before I round things out for those of you guys playing the PC beta in a similar vein to what they did on the console beta they're going to be opening up the farm today for two hours so you can dive in have a little look around play some football climb some buildings sit by the campfire all the usual stuff you do in a destiny social space It's open today from 5 p.m to 7 p.m pacific so if you're in the UK that is unfortunately 1 a.m to 3 a.m and if you're on the east coast 
That is 9pm to 11pm. It's only open today for that short time, although if it's anything like the console beta, then provided you stay in the farm, then you can remain there beyond the designated time window. There's not a great deal to do there right now, since NPCs won't be present, so it's really just an empty shell for you to roam around in, but if you haven't seen it, then it is worth checking out. So after all, you'll be spending a fair bit of time there come September 6th or October 24th, depending on whether you're console or PC. Either way, that's enough for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like would be much appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.